Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty I YouTube channel and I am back with another 4 on Friday collaboration with my friend Danny. I hope you'll stick around, find out what the theme is for this month, and see what I'm going to create. I want to say a nice big welcome back to my subscribers and regular viewers and if this is your first time to my channel I hope that by the end of this video you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. At the end of last year my friend Danny and I started a collaboration that we call 4 on Friday. Each month we try to bring you a video on my part or a blog post on Danny's part where we use one tool, technique, or product and show you how we use it in four different projects. Well we skipped last month but we're back this month ready to get started again. Now if you look in front of me here you might be able to figure out the theme for this month. I'm going to give you a minute. Any ideas? This month's theme is Buttons and Brads. I know it's not one product that we're using, but I think we like the letter B, Buttons and Brads. So in my video today, I'll be sharing with you how I create four different projects with a Buttons and Brads theme. Once you're done watching my video, make sure to go check out Danny's blog post. It is linked in the description box below, and I will also link the 4 on Friday playlist so you can go check out and see what we've done in the past. Now I would like to say let's get crafty and go right to the video, but I'm going to have to say let's get crafty and once I clean up this mess in front of me, we'll get started. Well, cleanup didn't go as bad as I expected, so I'm back to get crafty. For my first project, I'm going to be creating a card using brads as a decoration. The star of my show today will be these two decorative brads. I have had these for probably 15 years, back when I used to buy any brads I could find. I have a key and then the keyhole, and I'll just be adding those as decoration. Besides the brads, here's what I'll be using. I got out two Gina K Designs ink spots. I have peach bellini and sea glass. The stamp that I'll be using today is from the free bonus set that came with this month's paper pumpkin. There is this cute little doorway image here. For my layout, I'm going to be using the March 2020 sheet load of cards, and I won't be making nine cards, but I will be using the dimensions that I gave to make a single card. I got out a soft gray cardstock for matting. And for my pattern papers, I already pre-chose those. I thought this looked kind of homey. And these all come from the In the Kitchen paper pad from Michaels. Off camera, I pre-cut all of the pieces for the card. If you want more specifics on this, you can check out my sheet load of cards video. I will link it in the description box below. Because my image is larger than what the card called for, I did cut my white cardstock and my gray cardstock to fit that door stamp. After doing a test stamp, I decided to go with the Peach Bellini ink for my door. After getting my card base already off camera, I then started on my focal point. I matted my door with the light gray cardstock and then I got out my piercing tool to help with the brads. Once I decided where I wanted each brad to go, I made a little hole and this just helps poke that brad through there. Because having the brads all the way through both layers of cardstock would make this hard to adhere with my ATG, I did get out some foam rectangles and place those on the back of my focal point before I adhered this to my card. And here's a look at my finished project. For my next card, I'm not exactly sure what it's going to look like yet, but I got out some supplies that I think I'm going to use. The first things are the Gina K Designs Mini Wreath Builder Template and the Mini Wreath Builder Stamp Set. 
I will be using the same inks again, the Peach Bellini and the Sea Glass. And then for my buttons or brads, I have just some tiny brads here that I'm going to use as decoration again. And I have some that are kind of peachy, I thought that would go with the Peach Bellini ink. For my papers, I'll be using some scraps from the card that I just created. Off camera, I cut a scrap of cardstock that's two and three eighths inches wide by about five inches tall. I also decided to grab out my jelly bean green ink cube. I will be stamping my wreath at the top of that piece of cardstock. I already placed my template into my Misty and I am going to make sure that every time I stamp, those top two corners are in the template. Because this isn't a square piece, I have to be really careful about that. I chose one of the vines to make my wreath out of, and I got that placed and started stamping. I won't go through a lot of the process of the wreath builder because if you have one, you probably know how to do this, and if you don't, there are lots better tutorials on YouTube. The next thing I'm going to do is stamp one of the teeny tiny flowers from the stamp set using that sea glass ink. Now this part is a little bit different. I want to stamp four on the inside of the wreath and four on the outside. So every time I turn this, I'm actually going two spots instead of just one like with the green vine. Once those first four flowers were stamped, I cleaned the stamp off and then I arranged it on the inside of the vine and did the same process to get four stamps there. And now, instead of stamping more images from that wreath builder set, I'm going to make four holes around the outside of my wreath where I will be placing the peachy colored mini brads. I tried to find a good spot about halfway between the two outside flowers and then I just rotated my piece each time, finding that same spot and piercing it. Before I proceed with putting my brads into my focal point, I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment. I pulled out another Gina K Designs wreath builder stamp set and I'll be using the sentiment that says wishing you the best birthday ever. To help bring out those peach brads that I'm going to add later, I am stamping this in the Peach Bellini ink. Off camera, I cut and folded a white card base and I went ahead and cut down my pattern papers. The floral one I cut to five and a half inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall. The light gray is five and a half inches wide and three and a half inches tall. And the polka dot piece got cut to five and a half inches wide by four and a quarter inches tall. I used my ATG to layer and mat all of these and place them just flat down onto that card base. I'm just now realizing that I never showed you the process of putting the brads on the focal point. I matted the focal point with that gray cardstock, re-pierced those four holes, and then put my brad through both layers. Once the card base was ready, I used some Stampin' Up! dimensionals to adhere my focal point to the card front. And here's a close-up look at card number two. For my third project, I'm going to be using these clear buttons as a focal point on a card. I grabbed out a circle punch I had that actually ended up fitting these buttons perfectly and then again I grabbed out those scraps of pattern paper. The first thing I did was start punching some circles. I think I did eight of each pattern paper and it ended up working out pretty perfectly. Because it will take my buttons just a little bit to dry, I did go ahead and move on to these next. I used some art glitter glue and just kind of spread that on the front of each pattern paper and then I smushed that clear button down onto each one, centering it as best as I could and kind of wiping off that excess glue. Once I had those ready, I set them to the side to dry. 
off camera, I got a card base ready and I cut a piece of gray cardstock to five and a half by four and a quarter and a piece of white to five inches by three and three quarters inches. I wanted to add some texture to that white piece of cardstock, so I got out a dots embossing folder and ran that through my cuddle bug. Once that was all done, I added some ATG to the back and placed that in the center of the gray cardstock. I won't make you watch the whole process, but the next thing I did was lay down each of my pattern paper circles until I thought I had a nice pattern. The three here that I'm pointing at, those are actually placeholders for the buttons later. So I'm going to start adhering these down one by one, and then later I'll take those three placeholders and put those in some of the empty places that you see now on that card front. Once I had all those in place, I cut off the pattern paper that was hanging off the edge and used those little bits to fill in a couple more bare spots. Because the buttons are a little heavy and my background is bumpy, I pulled out some glue dots to adhere my buttons to the card front. While I had finished adhering those down, I just wanted to let you know that this video contains a hidden giveaway. So make sure that you watch until the end of the video to find out how you can win all of these projects that I'm making today. For the sentiment on this card, I'm using a set from Sweet and Sassy Stamps called Be Encouraged. I will be stamping that with stays on ink onto vellum. The sentiment I chose is Be Not Afraid, God Is With You, and I'll be using my Misty to stamp this because I want to make sure I get this nice and dark on that vellum. My stays on ink pad is a little bit dry, so it did take a couple times, but it's nice and dark. I then trimmed that down with my little Fiskars trimmer until I thought it was a good size for the card front. Because the left side of my sentiment strip will be hidden underneath that button, I did place a couple of the mini glue dots from Stampin' Up on that left side. Then I wrapped the right side around to the back and used my ATG to adhere that down. Then this entire piece got adhered down to the front of the card base. I decided now that I needed a little something extra to bring out some of the peach in the pattern papers. So I pulled out some sparkly peach enamel dots and placed three of those onto the card front. And here's a look at the finished card. For my fourth project, I'm taking a little liberty with the word button, and I'm going to be making some buttons with my Call Me Crafty Owl logo using my button maker. Because my printer paper is pretty thin, I do have to back it with a scrap of cardstock before I punch my button art out. The first type of button I'm going to make is just a standard button with the pin back. I place all of my parts into the correct sides of my button maker and then I just turn it, press, turn it, and press, and then I have a cute little button. You can buy lots of different parts for these button makers and the next thing I'm going to make is a keychain. The process is pretty much the same with the button maker, but then once my button is made, I snap on that keychain back. Finally, I'm going to make a flat back button. This one doesn't have a pin or a keychain, and what I like about this is you can make your own flare for paper crafting, and this machine does work pretty nicely with pattern paper. And here's a close-up look at each of the three pieces. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. As I promised, I'm going to be giving away the projects that I created today. To be qualified, you need to be 18 years or older, live in the United States, and be a subscriber to my channel. To be entered to win, all you need to do is give this video a thumbs up and then leave a comment below, any comment, and make sure to include the hashtag 
hashtag buttons. Please don't say anything about the giveaway specifically because I want the people who watch the video in its entirety to be the ones that are entered in this giveaway. You'll have until midnight on Friday, April 4th to leave your comment and then I will do the drawing that following week. Now don't forget to go check out my friend Danny's blog and find out how she used buttons and brads in her projects. Until my next video, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.